Welcome to humid Houston, folks. Uh, Eric Smith rocking the shorts. Uh, he brought him, <laughs> brought him with him, so <laughs> might as well wear them. Hey, uh, although it's nice back in the GTA, we're not sure if you're wearing shorts back there, but uh, Raptors went through a shoot-around today, coming off that, that huge win against Dallas, and uh, we got a lot of stuff for you in the pregame. We should probably give a plug for that. I had a great interview with Micah Norai, who, of course, does a lot of the advance work and he talked about Houston's offense. You know, the, the triangle is highly regarded and, and, and the Princeton offense well vaunted in, in their production. But I got to tell you, Rick Adelman's high post stuff is, is really difficult to stop. And Houston's one of the best scoring teams in the league. Eric Spolster even said after the win uh, by Miami here the other night, he said, I hate those kind of games because they win like 120 to 124, 117 or something. Houston's a high-powered offensive team, going to be tough to stop tonight. You know, you also uh, spoke with Joey Dorsey. You're going to yeah. hear that in the pregame show. I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Leandro Barbosa, so you'll hear that as well. And, of course, the regular chat with Jack Armstrong. But the interesting thing with Barbosa is we spoke a lot about uh, if he has to carry the bulk of the load at the point, and I guess that's kind of the storyline yet again going into yes. the game, Jonesy. Barbosa is still ailing. He's got the shoulder, he's got the wrist, he's got the knee, but he is expected to play. Amir Johnson with the back is expected to play. Bargnani's still not with the team, so he's out. Stojakovic isn't with the team, he's out. Sonny Weems is with the team, but the back is still causing issues. He won't play tonight. Jose Calderon with the uh, uh, a foot. Left foot. I'm getting them all like confused yeah. now. Left foot, and then Jared Bayless with the ankle. They are both game-time decisions, so if neither one of them play... Then Barbosa runs the point, plays a bulk of minutes, and you're probably going to see Julian, Julian Wright, Wright as the primary <laughs> yeah. backup tonight. Uh, and, and, and the reason why people say Julian Wright, he played point guard in high school. So he's like the next closest guy that the Raptors have to a point guard on this roster. And some people have been joking with me, I'm sure, and you as well on, on Twitter. Hey, suit up Alvin Williams. All joking aside, I don't know if that's something the Raptors would have considered, but they don't have a roster spot anyways after the signing yeah. of uh, Dupree, so they simply wouldn't even be able to consider something ridiculous like that, like that's, a you know a, a little contract player coach type thing. That's Not that something they probably would, but that's I mean, something we should ask Alvin Williams if he actually filed his retirement papers. Yeah, yeah. if he's actually filed. Because Jerome Williams has told us that he never did. At I least, know. At least as of a year and a half ago, he hadn't. That's true. So I, I mean, and, and who knows? You could be like Keith Van Horn. Your contract's still alive, get thrown into a deal and get $4 million out of it. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> Happy New Year. Uh, it, it, look, the other thing is, let's face it, uh, the Raptors on a really tough stretch right now, banged up, but they go back for one game at home against Boston, Eric, and then we're back out on the road for Chicago, Cleveland, Cleveland Boston and then again. Boston again. So yeah. it's, a, it's a very tough stretch. In fact, 10 of 17 in January will be on the road. So this is... This is crunch time in terms of the season, just to kind of hang in there with depleted bodies and a, a depleted lineup uh, to be able to hang tight for a little while. Let me ask you this quickly. We didn't set this up, but these vlogs are never scripted. No. We, half the time, we're like, what do you want to talk about? Ah, we'll be fine. We know what we're talking about. It's good. 2010, look back at it. Oh, boy. And I'm not going to let you pick Chris Bosch's departure because that's the obvious one. That is the number one story for the Toronto Raptors in 2010 you know, Bosch's departure, or even the, the angles that you want to look at with Bosch that either led up to his departure or assisted in his departure, whatever, Bosch is the story. So Chris Bosch cannot be what you pick. 2010, uh, what stands out for you? Uh, for me, the year of disappointment. And, yeah. and, I, and I don't say that, you know, lightly or as a, as a slight on the team. Just the fact that, and it ties into the Chris Bosch thing. People were saying, well, you should have traded him at the All-Star break. At the All-Star break, they had the best record for at, at, at All-Star break in franchise history. Right. So to say trade him, I mean, you're, you're foolish if you're doing that. And any, any GM is going to lose their job if they do that and then not make the playoffs. But going forward from that, the fact that uh, this team, I thought was a playoff team last year, finished one game out of the playoffs uh, in, in one spot out in, in, in ninth and held a playoff spot from December 15th to April 15th Lost it on April 16th. The season was over on like the 17th or 18th, and that was it. Um, to me, it has to be the disappointment of, uh, you know, looking towards getting back to the playoffs and, and things just, you know, not falling into place. I, I'm going to go with Hito Turkoglu. And, and that kind of As ties an individual, into, yeah. yeah. That's going to tie into the disappointment overall, but clearly the disappointment of Turklu. And it's not to pin And he's on playing one guy. his butt off now in Orlando. Yeah, I huh? guess he's happy again. Yeah. He's comfortable again because he wasn't good in Phoenix, and he certainly wasn't good in Toronto. 
uh, but certainly he's looking pretty good in this short uh, return to uh, to Orlando. And I'm not pinning it all on one guy because there are a lot of people that you could line up and yeah. say, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your, your fault. I always talk about cutting up that pie because everybody gets a slice. But Turklu was a major disappointment last year, and that to me it stood out because if he was – what he was supposed to be, if he came as advertised, yes. I think you know we, you wouldn't have been talking about a team just scratching and clawing to get in. You know, you would have been talking about a team that was at least solidified, whether it be an eighth or higher. I think they could have been and should have been a much better team. So we're kind of on the same wavelength, but I'm I'm specifically looking at one guy. Happy New Year, folks. Keep talking. I think I might have something in my bag, but if I don't, then I'll. Then I'll Happy jump New out. Year, folks. We will be in the air at midnight. So whatever it is that you uh, lift the glass when you toast, be it bubbly. Uh, a, a wobbly pop. Uh, wobbly pop. I know it at our house it's sparkling apple juice or grape juice. Whatever it is, then uh, have one for us because we'll be uh, in the air come midnight. I thought I you, thought, I thought did I you just, take that thing? I thought, right? I, oh, was, man. I thought I was going to pop well, it off. Maybe we'll see if we can find it and pop it for the vlog the first one of the day. Man, man. I, I, I stole some streamers from the Dallas you Mavericks. You borrowed. You borrowed. Sorry, I borrowed one of those like you know streamer things that you had cracked the top of. <laughs> yeah. I thought I had it. There Man. it is, folks. Happy New Year. Told you they're not scripted. Have a great 2011, and uh, we'll talk soon.